Please rise as you're able for our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we are, are captive, captive to, to sin, sin and cannot, cannot free ourselves. Free. We have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, thought word, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. For the sake, the sake of, of your, your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, us renew us, us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Please be seated. For those who are visiting, I'm Pastor Joe, and on behalf of Deacon Carol, we're glad that you are here. For those who are watching us on YouTube, we're glad that you are uh, with us tonight. Um, today, there's a couple of things that uh, I want to announce. These are all very important, but um, please make sure you get your um, announcement bulletin um, so that you won't miss anything. But here's a few things that you, we need to know. We have been working very hard, the uh, Youth uh, Task Force, Deacon Carol and myself, um, trying to find candidates for our children, youth, and family. Well, we have two candidates that we've whittled down from 21. And next week, on August 25th, is for our first candidate, and on August 27th is our second. So what I'm going to ask is for if you have a child or a grandchild or a niece or a nephew, uh, in this church or want to be a part of this church, that'd be great. Um, August 25th and 27th, we need to have junior high here at 6 o'clock and senior high here at 7.30. I know it's a last-minute notice, but we've just now come to the two candidates. And 
on the 30th school starts. So once school starts, it's going to be really hard to get everybody here. So we're going to ask people, to, parents, please bring your kids. If you have a child in junior high or senior high, please call the office and let us know as soon as possible that you can have your child there. Also, August 24th for the junior high is a come back and get acquainted barbecue. That will be also in the evening. And then August 29th, right after church on Sunday, will be for senior highs, a welcome back. So all of these things are happening. I know it's all in about a week's notice, um, but as time runs short, um, we really need for the kids to be here. This is an important part of our church. Also, um, Philip is going to lead us, uh, teach us the, uh, the curie and the canical of praise. Um, so he'll lead us in that as soon as we uh, start after the greeting. Is there something else we need to mention? I think that's it. Okay. So we will begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. So good evening. Uh, we're going to start by taking a look at uh, the canticle of praise on pages three and four of your bulletin. And uh, this evening we're going to learn just the refrain. I will sing the verses. Um, if you feel comfortable singing along on the verses, either today or over the coming weeks, feel free to join in. Uh, the refrain goes like this.
six, you'll notice that we're again using uh, the gospel acclamation that we started learning last week. We will sing it twice today. If you're comfortable joining in the first time, great. If you want to listen once and join in on the second time, that's great as well. So now we're going to go back to page two and go through the Kyrie and the Gloria as they're printed. your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. 
Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way and that we went, and among the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land, Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness, As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, Keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I, might, that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel according to John. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I I live because of the Father and whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching at the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being being aware of his disciples, were complaining about it. He said to them, Does this offend you? Then what are 
then what are then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are the Spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who were the ones that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it's granted by my Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Um, is there, oopsie, sorry. Is there any students here that want to come up with a backpack? And if you don't have a backpack, we have some in the back. Yep. Um, hang on a second. Hello. Hi. So backpacks, what do they do? Yeah. Yeah, the whole school supplies. Books, tablets. Um, they didn't have tablets when I was in school. But they do now, which is actually better than carrying uh, 48 books. Um, you have pencils, papers, right? Uh, backpacks, um, are one of those really necessary things in school, and sometimes we have them in life. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what we put in here, but um, let's have a, a blessing for the backpacks. Lord, we thank you for all of these young children who are coming today and all those who are out there um, and listening. Lord, bless these backpacks and the students. Help them to grow in who they are, into knowledge of what goes on in life and in the world. Help the teachers, help them learn. Help them to respect our teachers and to respect each other. Lord, keep them safe. Help them to know that uh, they are loved for who they are, that there's a community here that cares for them, for just who they are. Lord, guide them in all that they do so they may grow and to the adults um, that you wish and created them to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, I remember in school, I always loved this way back in the day, you had a lot of books. But now you're going to have more uh, tablets, right? Where you're going to wind up being all electronic, pretty much. And that's okay, because you can... You can put books on the tablets. You can read from it. You can highlight now. I mean, it's just amazing what you can do. Um, actually, my grandson, Benny, who's three and a half, has a tablet that he uses at three and a half. Um, but what else can you put in a backpack? Yeah. Your lunch? Yep. You could put toys in there if you wanted, right? You can put just about anything in here. And so that's what I am going to talk a little bit about in my sermon today, about what we put in here. What I'd like you to do, folks, is open up your bulletin to the second reading. Okay. How about if we put in the whole armor of God in our backpack? to help us to be safe. Okay? We put our belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness, which means we want to make sure that we always tell the truth and that we always try to do what is right. And then it says, the shoes for our feet, that forever we are, so we are ready to proclaim the good news. That means we are ready to share with all our friends all that we have. And then we take the shield of faith. 
Well, see, that's why we grow and we learn who God is and what God has done for us. And the helmet of salvation. I like helmets, especially when I'm riding my bike. But the helmet of salvation and what this says, the sword of the Spirit, which really is the Word of God. Those are the things when we put it in our backpacks, that helps us along our whole life long. So as you take your backpack, remember this. It is for school, but it's also for life. So thank you for coming up here today, and we bless in the backpacks. Thank you. Well, I want to jog your memory. The summer of 2014, do you remember what you were doing? Well, that was the summer of the Ice Bucket Challenge. Yep. It was a challenge where you take a bucket of ice water and you put it over your head and over your body. The idea was that the shock of the ice water over your body represented what ALS sufferers feel every day, otherwise known as Lou Gehrig's disease. The purpose was to raise awareness and funds for ALS. I will say this, the challenge did raise $115 million, and I'm glad for that. But what happened through the summer is that it became all of the rage. People were posting it on Facebook accounts and all their apps that they have, showing that they did it. It became the cool and the hip thing. And kind of the reason for the challenge got lost. But guess what happened? When summer was over, people forgot about it, and they moved on to the next thing. Today, I want to talk about a different kind of challenge. Now, we heard it in our reading from Joshua. Professor Stephen Reed said, Joshua begins the challenge with a prophetic formula. It says, thus says the Lord. This formula tells the audience, the people there and us, that these aren't his words, they're God's. So maybe we should pay attention. Now most challenges have some kind of alternative or option that are discussed. Here, Joshua recognizes that the people might lose their desire to serve the Lord over time. So he challenges them to choose. It says the term this day indicates the time-sensitive nature of this decision. It's an imperative that they choose now. There won't be meetings after meeting to talk and discuss it over and over again. Professor Reed goes on to say that in our postmodern consumerist society, we are all about choice. As such, an imperative to choose should be familiar to us. Now, in the biblical world, they use choice in a particular fashion. The choice is an expression of a sworn oath where someone of lesser or status and wealth would swear loyalty to someone as a noble or somebody typically with greater status and wealth. Joshua challenges the people to serve the Lord on that day. Now in this passage, Joshua gives them three choices. The gods of Mesopotamian ancestors or the gods of the Amorites who live in the promised land. This gives way to the confession that Joshua and his family would serve the Lord. Now the community responds and declares that we will not forsake the Lord, the God of our deliverance. The challenge has been accepted. This covenant renewal in Joshua concludes with a confession of loyalty rooted in God's relentless 
advocacy for the freedom, listen, for all people. But what happens is we hear in the verses after what we've heard today, on that day Joshua made a covenant with all the people. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance. After these things, Joshua, son of Nun, servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in the land of his inheritance. Now Joshua was ready to die when he made this challenge. But think about the sense of peace that he had to looking back on his life. No more struggling in the wilderness, no more independence on manna, no more wars or fighting. Now the people will be able to build homes, plant vineyards. They could settle down. However, Joshua knew it would be easy for them to start to slide back in their faith when life got good and easy and to forget how they got there. This is why Joshua challenged them in their faith. He offered them a choice. Recommit yourselves to the Lord and serve the Lord only. Joshua led the way by saying, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Well, guess what happened? It says, a little further down, After the whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up, neither knowing what the Lord had done for them or even knew the Lord themselves. So then the Israelites did evil in the sight of the eyes of the Lord because they worshipped other gods. Joshua had called them to serve the Lord. Now we don't normally think in our faith in that way. It seems that we treat God more like a servant. We'll pray when things get tough. We call them foxhole prayers. When life gets hard. And then we get mad at God when God doesn't do what we want. But believe me, it goes a lot further than that. People have threatened to leave the church when the pastor tries to make a change in the bulletin. Believe me. Or the prayers. Or tries to bring about something new. I had a conversation with a Catholic priest named Father Matt. And he said, our society, we've had a selective, selectively chosen where we go. Go on vacations. Costco is beyond full. Every restaurant is packed to the gills. And if you were at Edison Park Fest, it was wall-to-wall people. But many have chosen to shy away from church because of COVID. Not talking about people who are shut-ins. But think about it. Have we selectively chosen where we go? Now, I understand COVID is real and we are here. We're trying to work through it, and hopefully one of these days these things will really be gone. But here's what I'd like to do today. I would like to be Joshua for a moment. I would like to challenge us as a community of faith on this day. Thus says the Lord. Have no other gods and worship only me. Keep the Sabbath. Love your neighbor as I have loved you and continue the mission I gave you. To worship together more, to serve and to do outreach more, to take part in the life of the church, to bring our children, help teach them all that the Lord has done so they don't grow up not knowing what the Lord has done for them. Pray more and learn about who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for us and share that with everyone. We need to ask ourselves, will we recommit our lives, ourselves, to the Lord and to the church? Now, I will make the covenant that Joshua made. For me and my church, we will serve the Lord. My challenge for you is this, to say what they said. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. When we dedicate ourselves to Christ, We're now ready to commit ourselves fully to God's mission, which gives us purpose and focus beyond ourselves 
It takes our eyes off of our needs and our interests, and it helps quench our self-centeredness, our apathy, and our worldly interests. The good news is that Jesus is with us, giving us unconditional love and forgiveness. And we need through the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can do it. So, if you would like to answer the challenge, read with me. Therefore, we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Amen. our faith in the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards, protect the land from drought, and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. Heal the sick and comfort the grieving. We pray especially for Carla, Carrie, Rob, Candy, Gloria, Peggy, Thomas, Brandy, Stephen, Justin, Jim, Mary, Jason, Anne, Michael, John, Scott, Barbara, Jan, Cindy, Arlene, Mark, Tony, Michelle, Denise, Kathy, Cliff and Cliff Jr., Bill, Pam, Robert, Alan, and Maggie. For Jonathan and Debbie Jett and family on the death of Jonathan's sister, Valerie. For all victims of violence, all affected by natural disasters, storms, flooding, earthquakes, and wildfires. For refugees seeking safety, especially the people of Afghanistan. Bring relief to all afflicted with COVID-19. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all who continue to work to end this pandemic and for all students and teachers as they begin the new school year, and for all others who we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community. Sustain enduring friendships and and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their loved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please rise as you're able for our communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give him thanks and praise. It's indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. For on this day Jesus overcomes death and the grave to a glorious resurrection and to watch to us everlasting life. So with the choirs of angels, the church and earth and the host of heaven, we join that praise your name and join the unending hymn. And he gave it to all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this when you remember me. And after supper, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant, my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this when you remember me. So because of that night, we are bold to pray the perfect prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good, and for all are welcome. Please be seated. Please open up your communion kits. Okay. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you, keep in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise, you're able for our blessing. So, mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. 